Okay, so the next thing I actually want to do here is uh, edit our name. So we don't need our update email component anymore. I think for the rest of this, for the rest of this uh, page, we're going to be doing everything on the front end. So or on this particular user account settings component. So first of all, I want to set an edit name mode on that page, um, and then uh, basically toggle between an input box and the name. So to make that work, first of all, the I'm going to using a VF box, just check that this isn't active. So we'll say not active uh, dot, we'll say edit name. We'll have to bring that in here uh, at the bottom. Edit name, it's gonna be false automatically. So it should show that. But now we don't want it to show this. If we wanna edit it, then what we're gonna do is, just like we did with the update email, um, I think it would be appropriate to update the, it would be appropriate to update the, the name or edit the name. So we'll say span dot badge dot badge dash warning. And we'll give ourselves a little margin to the left and we'll just say update in here. And when this is clicked, I basically want to set active. Um, I want to say active dot edit name equals true. I don't want to use the set active functionality because that's going to basically make even you know our our main user account settings table. Uh, it's going to take that off the page. Give that a try and see and see what I mean. And uh, yeah, you'll see exactly what I mean from there. So edit name. So basically we want to expose a, we want to expose those form elements. So in this case, what I'm going to say is VF active dot edit name. So the opposite of what we have just above, then I want to display, uh, you know, some, some form items. So let's say uh, we'll do dot form dash group just some simple bootstrap classes and form dash inline in there. Let's go and create an input box here of form uh, dash control and form dash control uh, dash small to make this small and not take up more room than it really needs to take up. And I'm going to add some uh, a V model in here, which is going to be uh, data dot name. So equals data dot name. So we have somewhere to assign this, this particular property. Form control, form control small V model. We're good there. Now let's create a couple of buttons to basically uh, submit it or to bit close down that particular form uh, element. So I'll say button dot btn dash. Um, Say primary. This will be our submit button, and oh, that. And of course, we want it to be small in there. And let's give this a little margin to the left of two. And in here, we'll say update, and we'll create another button here. <clears throat> pardon me, uh, with a class of button button dash. Um, what should we do in this case? Danger, I guess it'll be red and button dash SM and ML dash two on there. And then we'll just say, uh, you know, basically cancel that. Now, if somebody clicks this one, let's take care of this right now, uh, on here and let's just set active dot, uh, edit name to false. And then that'll, the, the our functionality here for opening and closing that should be in place with that directive. Okay. Update. Okay. Method data. Okay. So it's saying we need to add the data. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. Let's add that data in there. So I'm going to say data, uh, say name and our name, we should automatically set to, uh, you know, the, the value of the user. So when the user value comes in, 
<clears throat> pardon me. I want to set the value of the name. So let's say uh, so response dot data dot user, and then I want to say this dot data dot name is going to equal this dot user dot name. Okay, and so when it when we update the user as well to pull in their new details, this will show that this will get updated with it. So we don't need to put it in any kind of a mounted component or anything like that. Okay, let's see what happens for us now. Great, cancel, update, cancel. One thing I want to do here is just like I did with the one down here, let's give this uh, cursor the property of pointer uh, when they click on it. So style, we'll do an inline style. We could also add this to one of our SAS files uh, that will compile with Webpack. So, but in this case, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to do it inline because it's only one short line of code. Perfect. Okay. So that's in there. So now what we need to do is actually be able to update the username. So let's go ahead and we will, once this is clicked, uh, no, not this one. Sorry. We want, once this is clicked, so I click dot prevent, we want to update name in here. So now we can go down, we can create that, uh, method. Okay. So we're creating that method. So we'll go Axios dot post. This is going to be a put request, of course. And we'll say data slash accounts slash updates slash name. Uh, let me, sorry, let me check one thing. What, what name and convention do we use there? Yeah, email. So we use the singular. Okay, that's great. And then we want to pass along this dot user dot ID in there. Great. Um, dot then response, and we're just going to make sure that we're actually logging out that we've reached this endpoint. So we'll console log response dot data. Okay. Let's go ahead and create that endpoint now under data accounts updates name. So we'll say route. Put, we still need to add our data to that. So we'll go back right after I do this and we'll do that. Uh, email, no, sorry. Okay. Let's go back before we create that controller. Let's make sure we're passing through that data that we need to pass through. First of all, we need to spoof the method. So that'll be put. And we need to pass through the name attribute, uh, which will be this dot data dot name. Okay, great. Back up here. So name updates controller. We need to create that controller. PHP artisan make controller uh, data accounts up. Oops updates and name updates controller perfect okay so we'll do public function in here update we're going to bring through a name a user no, up, up date username request. And that's going to be our request object in there. And then we're going to have to bring through the user as well. Uh, right now I'm just going to return dollar sign uh, message, you know, uh, actually I'll say dollar sign uh, request validated. You'll see what comes through there. Let's create this request now. So PHP artisan make request, and that's going to be update username request. A lot of this, I mean, you know, getting fast at this kind of stuff, 
it requires a lot of rote actions, kind of like we're doing right now. So a lot of this stuff, you know, you should also be thinking ahead at this point because we've done this, uh, you know, several times now. So name, we want to bring across some name attributes. So yes, the name is definitely required and we need a minimum of three characters to qualify as a name. Another thing we need to add in here is uh, auth user, no auth ID needs to equal this, because we are in the request object right now, this route user ID. And we also need, so this route user ID and no, that's it. It just needs to match the ID so that they're authorized. So they are that particular user. I do believe we created an is user middleware as well, which you, which you could tack onto this instead. But this is satisfactory for me. We've handled everything we should uh, in here. So I'm not going to change any of the data yet. We're going to go in. We're going to test it. Make sure it's hitting our endpoint and everything is satisfactory that way. Okay, so let's go back. I'm just going to confirm that we're actually console logging uh, the, the name out. Yeah, okay, whatever response we get out. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click refresh. Update, Tyson London 3, update. Uh, we're getting a 500 error, and that's probably, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that that's because I haven't brought in uh, the auth, yeah, my auth namespace here. Go ahead, we'll do that. Okay, let's give this another try. We're still getting an error 500. Let's take an actual look at what this is. And it might be because I haven't brought in the actual namespace for update username request, which I haven't. Um, yes, binding resolution problem. Okay, so obviously I was just getting a little bit ahead of myself here. After I created the request, I, sh I needed to bring it in. So we'll import that particular class in there. Now this should work. So let's give that another try. No, we have another error 500. Go request, we'll find out what that error 500 is. Trying to get property ID of non-object. Okay, so the only place we're looking for the ID is in our username request right here. Let's see what happens if we do this with the route model binding. Username request. Seeing the errors that arise, not a bad, not a bad thing. Okay. Error code with a status of 403. Let's see where that 403 is coming from. Probably coming from our request. Um, in there, so let's see. Access denied. Okay, so this this action is unauthorized. So this is likely coming from our um, from our actually from from this particular command in here. So this route user. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to go back to my route, my web routes. Okay, so we have name, we have user. That's coming through correctly. Uh, update username request. This route user should match the ID on there. Name updates controller. User, user. I have not brought in user. This is the problem right here. Okay, I'm going to import the class app user. It didn't do that. This is honestly where my issue is coming from because it needs to do the binding. So when we go update username request, now, now because there's an object, we can put the ID on that. If you caught that, awesome. Uh, now let's give this one more shot and see if that's coming through. And it's coming through. Great. So I don't know if you can see that down there in the bottom, but uh, name Tyson London 3. Uh, that's good if we send across something else. Tyson London 5 in the bottom there as well is showing up. So that's great. So in the next video, we're going to look at displaying the errors uh, up above that could be addressed.